What's up guys, it's Ace Coleman and we're gonna do a bow build today. So I got a Stratos 40 and it's gonna look amazing. So let's get right into it. Got our grips, very important. That's dope. That is the new Cosmo Blue. Super tough paint. Yeah, this will be a great bow to set up. Let's just get right into it. So the first thing I would do is get some measurements off your old bow. I'm gonna actually take this D loop off and put it on the other bow just for simplicity, but I really just need to get the draw length. So we're gonna go ahead and hook this up. Yeah, that should be fine. Back that off just a little bit. Just there. Okay. Now, a tape measure. So I like to put this on the right rest hole. I like to put it in the center of that hole and then measure to where my D loop will actually knock on the string. Looks like we are at so this is a little shorter than 25. So 25 plus 1.75, that would be 26 and three quarters. So that's where I'm gonna start on the other bow. Another thing to note is I usually run around 25 and a half, sometimes even longer, almost 26 on the tape, but I'm running a really long day loop right now. You could even get the entire measurement from the center of that rest hole. And that is about 26 inches there. So now I'm gonna take this D loop off. Okay, so I actually didn't tie any center ties on this because I was playing with my knock height, but let me actually make sure I have my knock height off this bow. I'm just gonna steal it. So, okay, I got the handy dandy Easton T square. This thing is awesome. We're gonna put this in the bow. So basically down here, you're gonna to want to line this up with the center of the rest holes. I actually mark the center right there with a silver Sharpie and you can just line that up as best as you can. Good enough. And now it looks like just a little knock high probably, I mean literally a 30 second. We can also verify that with a knock backwards in here. So yeah, just above zero. You know, honestly, from this point of view, I would just go ahead and put it at zero. Zero, like, let's be real. A lot of people think zero is low. It's not really that low. Zero is really already high in the bow because the grip is below the center point of the bow. So, I mean, if you look, it's already lower than where the center of the bow is. It's already pulling pretty top side anyway. I just think if you go too high, it's like, it's weird, you know? It just doesn't feel that good. Let's go ahead and take this D loop off. Cabela's. This is what they give you when you get a Bass Pro credit card. If you've ever walked into a Bass Pro, I know you've gotten one of those credit card offers, man. So, he did the moment, man. I was needing a rain jacket. I was in Denver and I didn't realize that it rained up there a lot. I thought it was gonna be nice and warm, but it was very cold and wet. So I was like, wow, I could get a free rain jacket with this credit card today. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. So now we're gonna take this off. You can reuse D loops. You don't have to cut them off. This is BCY number 24, no three. The skinniest and it's black and yeah. It's the best material for sure. So to start, I would love to try that up here. I don't know if I'd really enjoy that though. I would love to try that. I don't know how I'd feel about it. I'm just gonna stick with what I know probably works. This is really low in the back of the bow. That's the joy of archery is having options to play with stuff. 
you'll have a lot of okay shots here, but up here you'll have like a lot of good shots, but you might have a lot of bad shots. It just depends on the kind of leverage and you know power you put in the grip. There we go. So now I'm gonna put my front disconnect on. Got a 10 degree. Perfect. Sight bracket. So now we're gonna put my rest on. This is the mounting block for the Freak Show QD from AAE. So I like to like leave this barely loose. Should be pretty good right there. Not terrible. And then we'll screw this in. When you screw in this bolt and this bolt, you will basically tighten this one down, tighten that one down. Then I like to really wrench this one and then just match them together. There we go, just like that. And then you can take this on and off as you please. Okay, off with the factory strings, which aren't terrible, but I've got some gas strings. So we're gonna try those out. Allen wrench, 530 seconds. I have stripped one of these out before. So make sure you put the screw in the hole straight. Don't wanna make a mistake like I did. And don't lose any of these washers. We'll start with this one, pop it off, pop this off. Pink, it's gonna look so good. Cotton candy, that's the vibe I'm going with. So these are basically the Freak Show blend, but with pink serving. So through the wire, that is what I'm trying out. And so far, I haven't had any complaints. They've been really good. So I'll go ahead and put the cables on and then put the string on. So there's the string, just set that aside, pull my cables apart. Okay, so we have the long end and the short end. So the long end will always run on the bottom like this. So we'll just go ahead and install that, roll that down, and then make a little J hook. It'll enter on the top side. And then I like to spin this around clip in and then roll it back around. Now for the other cable. Okay, very important tip. So you wanna make sure that if it tracks off the left, it stays on the left the whole time. And if the cable is on the right side of the cam, it's on the right the whole time. If you have them installed to where they cross, when you draw the bow, they'll rub against each other and it'll cause a ton of issues. So now I'm going to install the roller guard. There we go. Now for the string. Ah, backwards. Would not be fun trying to put a peep into that. So now we're going to put the D loop on, put a peep in, and then we're going to get the draw length set after we set up, you know, the mod as well as the let off on the cam. So, but yeah, let's go ahead and get our center. Okay, so now we're gonna take our knock and clip it on our mark. These are Biter 19200 knocks. I love these. So you just have to run a little thicker center serving or diameter so it actually like doesn't rock too much. This is okay. I'd rather it be too loose, but especially when we tie a top and bottom knot, 
I shouldn't do that as bad. So in the middle, pull up, and I like to get it where there is some decent traction there, like that. So we have room to create tension within the knot by pulling this up. That's good. That should do. Pull that into itself, around the front, through the middle, and then pull our loop up. And that is how you tie a D loop. Very simple. And I like to take some pliers and just pull that through. Got a little bit of wiggle room right now. That's fine. Looking good. So now we're going to take the bow out of the press. Okay, just a little out of time. Not terrible. 26 and an eighth. So we're pretty long right now. So now we're going to change my mods to get them to correspond correctly to my draw length and to my holding weight. So we're at 26 and an eighth. We need to go like an inch shorter. So one letter jump is a half inch. So two letter jumps is a whole inch and I'll be like an eighth inch long, which is fine because I have to move my holding weight out from the 70 to the 65, which is about an eighth inch jump anyway. So that should be good. So let's go ahead and do that. So D, E, F, we need to be on F. I'm going to go ahead and change my grip out to the four degree. Okay, so my bottom cam is hitting a lot further ahead then my top, just a tick really on the draw board. But let's go ahead and get an eyeball on what our draw length is at. Okay, so we're at 24.75. So we need to go a quarter inch longer and we should be in the ballpark. Should get me in the ballpark. Perfect. Okay, so now let's go ahead and check out the specs. Okay, got the timing dead even. I just had to put like 
one twist in the bottom cable, the bottom cam was touching, but let's check the straw length out. Okay, so we're at 25 and an eighth. I've been shooting 25 on the other bow, so I think this will do for now. Worst case scenario, I just have to change the grip out or maybe add three twists to my string, take a few twists out of my cables. So now let's check the center shot and then get my sight rammed a little to the left and we'll go ahead and put a peep in and then tune the bow. Okay, so first, after you get all of your draw length stuff done and then you have your D-loop on, I would get your rest height. So I'm holding this kind of level with the rest holes. Now that actually looks pretty decent. I'll just go up a little bit. Make sure we hold it against the block. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so what I'm looking for is for the prongs to barely touch when this is actually sitting straight through the rest holes or at least parallel with the rest holes. As far as how I set the center shot, I like using a dial caliper. Very simple process. So if I was setting my center shot, I would go online to where my arrow is, go to the diameter charts. I have a 350 spine, the outer diameter is 0.417. So we're going to take that number, 0.417, divide it by two. We're gonna add that to 13 divided by 16. 13 sixteenths, and that's what we're gonna set our dial caliper to. Perfect, and lock that down. Really hard to get this just right. Perfect. So now I'm going to take this and touch the arrow on the outside and look at how my rest is set up. And as you can see, the prong is just a little to the right of perfectly straight. I'm talking like a, a 32nd or a 64th of an inch, like that's crazy. So we're just gonna lightly tap that to the side, so to speak. Just a little bit. So I actually have my screw and the rest maxed out. So I'm gonna have to take that out. That is no big deal. Perfect, okay. I'm gonna press this against the bow. Tap this, and that actually looks pretty close. Just a little to the left. Let me know in the comments if you think it should be off to the left or right more, but I think that is perfect. So, I personally think, you know, especially for long distance stuff, you need to get that number pretty accurate especially for 3D with the sight tape. Anything where you're moving your sight back and forth, you need to get that measurement. At least when you're starting out, before you paper tune, get that right. And as you shim the cams left and right, you will actually probably need to reset it because it could be off just a little bit. So now we're gonna go ahead and install a peep and we're gonna put it a little below where we normally would on a 36 inch bow. So on my other bow, I had about four and three eighths. So I would like to go just a little south of that. Got that little mark right there. Pull the string splitter carefully, carefully. Do not want to take that out. Carefully down here. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to push this up though. I want to go ahead and carefully push this up the string. Get our peep housing and put it in there. Right there. That looks really good already. So, and just move our D-loop. Cool. And I am going to go ahead and tie this in using some Angel Majesty 14 thousandths, 15 thousandths. I have a friend that says this is 14, but it's very thin stuff and it's very tough.
All right, we have that done. I would always keep something in your string. So if you ever did take your peep out, you would have something there to mark the center of the string. And sometimes I'll use a peep tuner, but for now this will work. You can also slide that up and down to change the twist, which is also super important. So let's go ahead and see how this thing shoots through paper. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what this does. Okay, that's unfair. <laughs> that's pretty good. Um, let's actually take a look though. Honestly, I'm, I'm chill with that. That's not too bad. So basically when you're paper tuning with the rest, just, just bring it up until the prongs just hit or maybe just a little bit more. Sometimes it will actually bear shaft tune better if the rest is higher in my experience. But I always like having it to where the rest is too low. That way you have a high tear through paper and you know you're not having any clearance issues. Yeah, and then the left and right is good. That means I have a really well-spined arrow. I'm not overly torquing the bow in any way. So I was anticipating to have a left tear. I just felt like my arrows down the range were kind of kicking when I shot the bow earlier. That's pretty much all I need to do right now with the bow. I will probably put a smaller peep in. I have like a 16th. Definitely want to put like a 364ths in there. The fit of the bow is pretty good. I do have some heavier limbs that I might try out because my holding weight, I just don't have enough right now. So I feel like it's probably like 18, 19 pounds. I could be completely wrong, but we'll have to see. It just depends. But overall, it's a very stable bow. Compared to the 36, the biggest thing I like about this bow is that it doesn't lean back and forth. It doesn't have any, any teeter-totter type effects. That allows me to like really get comfortable with the bow and just focus on execution. So, but that's pretty much how I build a bow. Just keep it simple, follow a process. You'll know exactly what you're looking for. So that's it for this one, and I'll see you in the next one.